Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at my Ford F-150 that has trouble with its instrument cluster. My F-150 is a 2006 model and it's getting a little long in the tooth and some things need to be repaired. Like everyone, I get concerned when there's a safety issue with a vehicle. Recently the brake light indicator came on and I wasn't sure what the problem was. I stopped the vehicle, checked all four hubs to make sure that none of them were hot, checked the brake fluid level, everything seemed to be fine. I depressed the emergency brake and then released it and it seemed like the light went away. A few miles down the road the light came back on again. I went to the Ford F-150 forums and checked online to see what was going on with the truck. It turns out there's a common fault with the instrument cluster. It turns out the uh, solder joints are faulty in a lot of these vehicles. So it's time to rip out the dash and see if we can fix this. What we're looking at is a 2006 F-150. This has about 231,000 kilometers on it and it's having issues with the brake light staying on. That can usually be the brake light switch for the parking brake or it can also be a reservoir issue where the sensor tells you that you've got too low a flu fluid there. Uh, however, this one is electronic. If you hit the dash, the light goes out. So I'm going to use my electronic superpowers, take the dash apart, and repair the circuit board. Here we go. This is the inside of the truck. What we're going to be doing is removing this panel right here. There are two screws down at the bottom to hold it in place. Once this comes out, there's two screws to hold this top assembly out or in. You take that out, this whole bezel comes off and gives us access to the instrument cluster. This is a seven millimeter socket set. I picked a very hot day in July to fix this truck. The lower panel requires the removal of two 7mm hex head screws. The upper panel requires two more screws to come out and then the instrument cluster has four screws to come out. I apologize for the camera angle. I was really busy trying to get this thing apart and doing it by myself with no uh, camera person present. On the back of the upper panel there's a small cable assembly that can be pulled out to make it easier to remove. The instrument cluster itself has the gear shift indicator assembly that removes from the bottom of it by depressing two little interlock tabs and pulling it straight down. Once that is done, the instrument cluster is free and you can take it downstairs to work on the electronic section. These connectors are tricky to get out. I found if you press on this little tab here, you'll be able to release the latch and then the cable comes off. You have to release this small catch here and here to pull out the indicator showing the, the gear. Cluster is out of the car. Here it is on my bench. What we need to do is remove the, the view screen and this back protective cover. So what we're going to do is use a Torx 15 pull out these screws
Here's the plastic cover. You have to remove the circuit board on this. There's going to be some catches. Right here. Here. Looks like there's only two catches that hold this in place. But we can't do that until we remove the needles from the instruments. Remove the cover. It's these black plastic pieces. They just push up and out. And once they're all off, we can get access to the needles. Just using a screwdriver to keep the gap open, so while I'm releasing the pressure here. There we go. That was easy. Okay, now we, when we pop these off, we don't want to screw up the alignment. So what we're going to do is just mark it. So when we, re we reinstall it, we'll know where they're supposed to be. Got a Sharpie. comes the scary part. Try to pop these guys off. That wasn't the sound I wanted to hear. Neither was that. Oh boy. For broken. Let's fix that. Okay. Uh, now, let's see. Well, that was easy too. Just falls out. All right. So this goes on that little button. Okay. From what I've heard online. This resistor has an issue, and sometimes this connector has cold solder joints. So we're going to clean up the joints here, here. This is our suspect resistor right here, right below the left hand side connector. Alright, I'm using my extra strong cheaters. And that solder joint does look a little crusty, so let's see if I can get this to solder, and hopefully you've got a view of it. Try and get the connectors. So right in here.
location, you'll get a short. I resoldered all the connector pins and any resistors that looked a little flaky. It's kind of difficult to repair a circuit board while you're filming because the camera gets in the way. I created a few solder bridges or short circuits which were easily fixed by using my solder sucker to remove the excess solder. Just take your time and you should be fine. Okay, I've touched up all the resistors, all the connectors, everything looks okay. These are the little stepper motors that are used for the indicators. So now it's time to put it back together again. This is the first time I've taken apart the instrument cluster on an F-150, so I'm kind of winging it. If you attempt to do this repair yourself, there's a few things to watch out for. Center. First of all, getting the indicator needles off is a pain in the you-know-what. You most likely will break them, but a little bit of CA glue will fix them up. The next thing to watch out for is the little shaft that is used to reset the trip meter. Don't forget to put it in before you snap everything together like I did. Another thing to watch out for is the LCD panel used for the odometer. Make sure it's well seated. It looks like it's a little DuPont connector on the board and the pins have to be very carefully inserted. Like the Once I assembled and reassembled and assembled again, I finally got it all well. together and ready for the truck. Okay, I've touched up all the resistors, all the connectors, everything looks okay. These are the little stepper motors that are used for the indicators. So now it's time to put it back together again. The little shafts are on the center. like the odometer it needs to be plugged in as well. Right. Odometer fits into what looks like a DuPont connector. Just have to make sure that goes in. There's the LCD for the odometer. Okay, all our pins are back in. Just have to get the odometer put in.
Here we go. Let's see it. Okay. I think I'm going to put a drop of glue on that. Here's a tip when you buy crazy glue or cyanoacrylic glue. Put them in these little tubes. The one that you've opened, turn it upside down so you know that's the one that's open. I won't bore you by having you watch me take this thing apart a couple of times and uh, leaping out all the curse words, but I finally did get it all together and back into the vehicle. Then we had a little bit of a problem. Because I had those stupid needles on and off several times, I'm pretty sure that the alignment is off. I put it in the vehicle and sure enough, there's a couple of them that aren't reading properly. Now what do you do? So while I was in the vehicle, what I ended up doing is resetting some of the gauges and when you plug in the right hand connector, the assembly moves all the needles <laughs> back to the oh, default boy. position. So I think oh, I'm pretty close. Let's take a little uh, back in, shall we? to make sure that the speedometer is accurate, <laughs> because I really don't like speeding tickets, I'm going yep, to be yep, using an <laughs> onboard diagnostic connector scan tool with my laptop to verify the speed and all the other parameters of the instrument cluster. I would recommend before you start working on this instrument cluster to have one of these onboard diagnostic connector scan tools. The ones that use USB, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi are preferred. The little handheld units usually do not give runtime information. They're used to reset the MIL indicator and they're also used to uh, read the error codes out. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little more challenging than I expected, but that's the way life is. So uh, if you have the same problem, just uh, take your time and go for it. If you like this video, please hit subscribe and maybe give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it, and that gives me the motivation to keep the videos coming. Thank you again.